How close are we, Governor, to an emerging market crisis? There's lots of comparisons to Ecuador here, Ecuador there, even comparisons to your Mexico. How close are we to true EM instability? Well, hello, Tom. Hello, Francine. Uh, well, uh, I would say that, yes, uh, during this year, the pressures on emerging markets have increased. Uh, but at the end of the day, I would say that the main pressure has been contained in two cases, which is Turkey and Argentina. Uh, I would say that from uh, some uh, years ago until now, emerging markets have done a lot of progress in terms of strengthening their macroeconomic framework. Therefore, they are more resilient. But still, uh, the pressures that they might uh, face in the near future will be increasing as a normalization in U.S. and other advanced economies' monetary policies will take place. On a theoretical basis, one of the leaders of thinking about the new theory of economics has been William White of Canada, of course, for years at your Bank of International Settlements. Do we need a new theory of economics, or can we use the yes. old models to move forward? Well, I think that we need uh, new models, but we don't, we don't have to forget what we learned and what worked in the past. I think many of the theses that uh, Bill uh, put forward are still valid. And I think that that's the issue that uh, in terms of uh, monetary policy implementation, uh, one, have to, one has to keep an eye on the final objective of monetary policy, which usually is inflation, uh, growth, but also financial stability. Uh, so it is the interaction of both issues, uh, traditional objectives on a monetary policy and financial stability, uh, the ones that need to be balanced out. Uh, Mr. Carstens, first of all, it's really a great pleasure to speak to you. It's almost 10 years since central banks started slashing interest rates and buying bonds. If you look at government debt, it's higher now than before the crisis. Are you worried that central banks won't have the firepower next time? Well, I mean, certainly the size of uh, sovereign debt is, is something that needs to be taken into account. In particular, some countries will need to be careful about that. Now, central banks uh, will be able to use uh, its uh, war chest. As a matter of fact, in the ten, last 10 years, the war chest of uh, central banks have been increased. We now have instruments that we didn't have before, or we thought we didn't have, but at the end of the day, we have. Uh, so. I think right now what would be important is to move forward gradually on normalization so that uh, if push comes to shove in the future, an, an additional monetary policy action would be necessary in case of a recession, the central banks will have space to act. Uh, I understand, but how will they be able to fight the next recession if they don't have the bazooka? Do they need to normalize quicker than the market is expecting them to? Well, again, I, I don't see why we, central banks would not be able to to do whatever they need to do. I mean, uh, for example, the programs of asset purchases, it's very easy to implement. And uh, there is no restriction on how this could be used in case necessary. Of course, right now we are in a position where it would be adequate to, to contain what has been done in the past, to bring it back to more normal uh, circumstances, so that, so that if we have really a recession in the future and there need to be action by the central right. banks, they, there will be enough space to do so. Governor, one final question on your Mexico. The president took a massive victory lap, President Trump, on USMCA. How bad did Mexico lose? I think Mexico did fine. I mean, I think one of the most important things here, I mean, it's, I, I would say it's the bulk of the, of the news here, is that for Mexico, the relationship, the commercial relationship with the U.S. is of the essence. It's really important for Mexico to have access to U.S. markets. Uh, now, uh, that access was put into question, or at least the degree of access was put into question. And that generated a lot of uncertainty. That stopped uh, for a while investment. It was very difficult for corporates to plan uh, looking ahead. Uh, therefore, the fact that we have now 
a, a new agreement uh, with some, yes, modifications in the margin, but all, all in all, I think it's a very, very positive agreement, the one that will allow both countries to win, and probably three countries with Canada. Uh, Mr. Carsons, do you expect the trade war between the U.S. and China to escalate? And if it does, is it inflationary or deflationary for the world economy? Well, it's difficult for me to predict uh, about the... <laughs> what will be the the, 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 the future that the, the trade policy in the US uh, will have for us in uh, uh, will have for us I mean uh, certainly if we take uh, the, the case of NAFTA uh, there was up, ups and downs at the end of the day a uh, uh, reason prevail and I think that a, a very positive agreement came out hopefully at some point we will converge to such situation in the case of China. Now, if there is a, a, an openly a, an open war in, in terms of a trade trade a, between the U.S. And, and, and China, it can be really disruptive. I think what something we need to keep in mind is that now most of the trade a, among a, in the world economy is of intermediate a, goods. A, a lot of production now is done by, by, by productive value chains. And that can be distorted very easily. If that happens, uh, then I think production can, can suffer. We might have a slower economic activity. We would probably have lower commodity prices. And therefore, I don't think that we would have inflationary pressures. Uh, but at the end, to have lower inflationary pressures is not good, because probably it will mean lower global growth. Um, Mr. Carson, I, I wanted to come back to the financial crisis, right? Uh, given the buildup of debt and actually given the level of risk taking, we know that in the last 10 years, countries made banks more resilient to shocks. But have they done enough to prevent shocks from hitting banks? Well, I mean, yes, I, I think so. I mean, I think that the reforms have been uh, very thorough. They have been uh, they cover pretty much all the vulnerabilities of financial institutions. Uh, I think also there has been a very important change in the culture of, of banking institutions. They are far more prudent now. Uh, uh, therefore, I, I think that we are much better prepared for any shocks in the future.